Affinity Photo has a feature called Layer States that allows you to instantly toggle the visibility of specific layers. You can do this by creating explicit capture states, or by using queries that filter layers based on criteria such as type, name, and color tag. For my first example, everything here is neatly grouped, but I have a number of different layer combinations I want to quickly switch between. To start using layer states, I can go to Window, States, to expose the States panel. By default, it's docked on the right-hand studio here, but I'm going to drag it out and float it so I can also access the Layers panel simultaneously. There are two specific categories, Queries and Captured States. I'll show you Captured States first. I'll click this option down here to create a new captured state based on my current layer setup, and I'll name this Full Composition. Now I'll hide the Cutouts folder to hide all of the cutouts in the composition. Then I'll create a new state and name it No Cutouts. I might show the Cutouts group again, then hide the child group called Pedestrians. So I can now create another state and name it No Pedestrians. Another state I may want to have set up is one with no extra adjustments or filters. I'll hide Final Adjustments, Effects, and Localized Adjustments. Then create another state and name this Minimal Adjustments. Now I can click the Apply button next to Full Composition to return to my original document state. And I can very quickly move between the different states I've just created as well. I'll also create a black and white layer state. For this, I'll show the black and white group but I'll keep final adjustments and effects hidden. Then create a state for this look. I may decide that I don't want the car cutouts to be shown for this black and white layer state. I can easily hide the vehicle's group, then update a state by clicking on the update button here. Now if I switch to another state and back again, this has been updated as the vehicle's group is hidden. Now you may notice that on the state options here, you can toggle both visibility and effects. Effects refers to layer effects such as outer shadow and Gaussian blur. So I'll show you an example of where you might use this. I have this text composition with some linked text that has been flipped and had some strong Gaussian blurring applied to it. On my states panel, I'll create a captured state and name it initial composition. Now I'll click on the FX icon to open the Layer Effects dialog for the reflected text, and I'll increase the Gaussian Blur amount. I'll create another state called More Blur. Now I have two states that I can toggle between to quickly change the amount of blur applied to the reflected text. I may also want to experiment with another option, so I'll return to my initial composition then open the layer effects on the text layer again. I'll enable inner shadow and increase the offset. This creates an interesting contouring effect that appears to blend areas of the text away into the background. Whilst I'm here, I'll also switch to the main text layer and enable outer shadow. I'll bring both the opacity and radius up, then use the offset tool to give the main text a slight shadowing effect. Now I'll save this captured state as experiment. I can now easily toggle between these three states to evaluate and compare the different looks I can achieve just by modifying layer effect parameters. Now let's look at queries. This is where things get really interesting. I've been working on a 3D render composition here, and I actually have two ideas I want to try out, having either a galaxy or the sun as the point of interest for the astronaut here. I've currently hidden all layers pertaining to the sun. Now I could use snapshots to help me quickly toggle between both ideas, but they save snapshots of the entire layer stack at the time of creation. I want something more flexible, where I'm only hiding and showing certain layers, leaving me free to experiment with other layers that are present on both ideas. I'll click here to create a new query. 
and name it Galaxy. Then I'll create a second query and name it Sun. Now what I've done is I've gone through my layer stack and I've color tagged all the layers I want shown for the Galaxy idea as red. I've done the same for the layers I want shown for the Sun idea, tagging them as yellow. On my Galaxy query, I'll enable the layer tag option and choose red. I'll expand the Sun query, enable the layer tag option and choose yellow. Now, if I wanted to hide my Galaxy layers, I could click on the Hide icon for the Galaxy query. And to show my Sun layers, I could click on the Show icon for the Sun query. To show the Galaxy layers again, I can click on the Show icon for the Galaxy query. But I would then need to hide my Sun layers by clicking on the Sun query's Hide icon. The benefit to using layer states compared to snapshots is that the layer stack is still very much mutable. You can move layers around, add new layers, and of course, change the color tagging. So this approach is very much dynamic as opposed to static. For example, I could add an HSL adjustment and increase the saturation. Then color tag it red. This will hide the adjustment when I hide the red tagged layers. So it will no longer apply for my sun composition. Moving back to the visualization example, I'll show you some query ideas based on layer naming. I'll return to the full composition state and zoom into this area. Then create a new query and name it man. Within the pedestrians group, I have several layers containing the word man. Expanding this query, I can enable the layer name option. If I simply type man with a capital M, then try and use the hide button, nothing happens. This is because the query is trying to match the word explicitly. I can enable regular expressions. And now if I use the hide button, several of these layers will be hidden. It hasn't caught them all, however. Notice that the young man layer is still visible. This is because of case sensitivity. If I show these layers again, then change the M to a lower case and use the hide button, it will now just hide the layer with the lowercase m. To make this query case insensitive, I can use a straightforward expression. Open bracket, question mark, I, colon, man, close bracket. Upon using the return key to commit this, I can then click the hide button again, and it will hide all layers that contain the word man, regardless of case. Let's expand upon this with another example. On this composition, I'll create a new query and name it flares. Then choose layer name and enable regular expressions. I want to filter all layers that contain the words blue flare. So I'll type these two words. Now this will filter layers that explicitly contain the two words in the given order. But these two layers, extra blue glow and extra flare glow, are not being included. If I want to filter based on either the word blue or flare, rather than both together, I can use a pipe in between the two words. So I'll type blue pipe flare. This will now filter all the layers containing either of these two words. As well as hiding and showing layers, you can also use this option to select them. This would be useful for more complex documents with many layers. In this case, since I have all these layers selected, I can switch to the move tool and transform them together. I have a final example to show you. It's a floor plan that was originally imported into Affinity Designer from a DWG file. I've then saved the .af design file and opened it in photo for some further coloring and texturing work. I may want to hide and show certain layers as I work. First, I'll create a query and name it text. I'm going to filter by layer type 
and enable both art and frame text. Then I'll click hide. This will hide all the text in the plan, and I can easily show it again when I need it visible. Now I'll create another query and name it Windows and Doors. This time I'll filter by layer name, enable regular expressions, and type window, pipe, door. As we've seen previously, the query is case sensitive, so I need to make sure my words are all capitals here as per the layer naming convention. Now this lets me hide and show all layers containing either of these two words. There is a typo or a truncation of the word window here. To work around this, I can simply amend the text input and remove the W. It will then match all of the original layers I was targeting, as well as this layer. For most layer-based workflows in Affinity Photo, you likely won't need to use anything more advanced than basic regular expression tokens, but you can look up examples online if you have specific requirements for more advanced expressions. Finally, I can create a query to hide all the color and hatch fills. These come through from the DWG file, all named hatch. So I can simply filter by layer name here and type hatch. Press the return key, then use the hide and show buttons to quickly toggle visibility of these layers. And there we go. Those were some examples of how to use layer states and queries in Affinity Photo. Thank you for watching.